Hi everybody, Jim from the Maker Hive here, and welcome to part one of our DesignSpark mechanical video tutorial series. DesignSpark is a free 3D modeling software. I use it a lot for 3D printing. It's got some really powerful features and it's pretty easy to learn, so that's what we're here to do. Let's get started. When you first launch the program, you'll see this start page. It's a web page actually. It's got some ads and some links and some things like that. But what I want you to notice down here in the corner is a little tab that says start page. That's our current document. Later on when you've got multiple files that are open, you're drawing an assembly, you're multitasking, they'll all stack up here and they're navigable between the different open files uh, in this bottom bar. So pay attention to that as you go. It's pretty handy. Up here is the help and resources tab. These are actually pretty useful. There's a neat quick reference card. It's got some tips and tricks, a couple of pointers that can save you some time. Check that out. There's also a mouse gestures reference card. Uh, shows you a couple of things that you can right click and draw some shapes and uh, gives you some neat shortcuts that'll probably shorten your workflow. So check those out and uh, let's keep going. Over here, if you click on the file menu, instead of the drop down options, let's click on this box in the bottom bar that says Design Spark Options. That'll open all the different options for the program, and there's two or three things that you want to look at before you get started. First of all, click where it says Units, and here's where you set the program to either use metric dimensions or imperial or American dimensions. Uh, if you're using the program for 3D printing, know that STL files are natively in metric, so you'll want to design that way if that's your intention. Uh, it's really easy to get used to if you're not used to it, and uh, if you'd like to change it, though, that's where you'd do it. The next option down is navigation, and you can change which direction you scroll the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. So right now the default is for zooming in, you scroll downwards. If you'd like to change that to match other softwares that you're used to, here's the place. One other thing to look at is file options. These are all the different file types that can be imported and exported uh, within DesignSpark, and the important one for 3D printing is STL. Import it's usually all right to leave this on automatic, but if you've got a part that's really small or really big, you can change it between inches and feet, centimeters, all those things. Export is what's important, though. Here's where you actually set the resolution of the files that you create, and uh, it's a good idea to tune these into what your printer is actually capable of. So I print in 0.2 millimeter layers, and my nozzle is twice that dimension, it's 0.4 millimeters. So 0.2 is really the smallest dimension that I need a file like this to be output in. If I do more than that, the file's just unnecessarily large. If I do less than that, there's detail that I'm not able to print. So tune that into your machine and you'll be good to go. Let's start a document. Go to File, New, and New Design. And instantly we've got a sketch plane. Uh, this kind of quadro grid pattern will look familiar to you if you've done other CAD work. If not, we'll learn as we go and uh, let's keep going. Down here in the bottom left corner, there's an origin. This shows you where you're at in three-dimensional space. You can rotate around by clicking on the different parts of it. You can also rotate it 90 degrees at a time this way. And uh, there's a couple of shortcuts for the view. You can see the orientation menu up here in this top left corner. If you hit the letter H for home, it'll take you back to that isometric view that we started with. Another useful one is hit V, as in Victor and that will align the sketch plane with our current view. So you'll see it straight on from above and uh, it'll be like graph paper. Here are all of our sketch tools. Um, several of these have keyboard shortcuts. R for rectangle, L for line, C for circle. So you can click on these tools up in the top bar or you can hit those keyboard shortcuts and start using them without having to take your mouse away from the drawing. We're going to hit R for rectangle and Let's draw an angle bracket for 25 millimeter aluminum tubing. So we want our first square to be 25 millimeters. When you hit tab, you switch to the other dimension. You can type 25 there. Hit tab again and it'll apply that dimension. You see this diagonal cross line. That indicates that it's a square instead of a rectangle with a different height and width. Once we've got our dimensions, right now if you remove the mouse it would change the dimensions. So we'll go back to 25 by 25. You hit enter and that sets the rectangle. Also to navigate into the spin center you can move the mouse around and see it from all different angles and sides. If you do this enough you'll end up with it 
kind of twisted and backwards and sometimes it's hard to get back to where you started so hit H again for home or you can hit V for view and you'll see the views that you're familiar with and that we started with. To turn this square into a three-dimensional shape we want to use the pull tool. Its keyboard shortcut is the letter P so I'm going to hit P. Now we've got an outline, we've got a surface. You can see in this design tree on the left side there's a surface instead of lines. I like to rotate a little bit to see what I'm doing and then select that surface. Then by dragging the mouse you can pull it to any dimension that you like. If you've got a specific dimension in mind while you're holding the mouse button still hit the space bar and you can let go of that. The mouse can move around without changing the dimension and let's make this one four millimeters. So now we've got our square that we drew with the rectangle tool pulled up to where it's four millimeters tall and we're going to draw the next part of our angle bracket. So navigate over, let's look at this side. If you hit the letter S for select, it's right up here, let's select the next face that we want to sketch on and then we'll hit the letter K for sketch. When we hit the letter K it changes the mode. There's three-dimensional mode that's when we're orbiting around and looking at the solid. Here's the two-dimensional sketch plane and that's what we'll use. So hit V for Victor to line up the view and now we're going to do another rectangle, so the letter R selects the rectangle tool right up here. And we're going to draw another 25 by 25. So I've got the bottom dimension already. I'll hit tab to switch the other one. 25. Hit enter to set it. And there we go. Now I'll hit P for pull. And the last one was 4 millimeters, so I'll do 4 millimeters again. And there we have it. After you do functions like this, uh, you can see that it's still selecting faces and edges to use the pull tool on. If you type S for select, there's no more pull tool and you can click on things without changing the geometry of your shape. So H for home, here's what we've got. Let's put some holes in it for screws. S for select, we'll pick the face that we want to draw on, the letter K for sketch. Now we'll hit V for view. And of course you can do all these things again with the menu up in the top section, but I like keyboard shortcuts. What we've got here, the origin of our sketch plane, this zero, 00 point, is based on the face that we selected. So right now, if we drew a circle right there, it would be based between here and here on this center point. If we wanted to make that centered between the outer extremities, let's draw a line to do that. So L for line or it's right up here in the toolbar and we'll just do a diagonal from one end to the other double click to terminate a line otherwise you can drag and continue and do multiple segments or just hit escape when you're done and you'll have the one that you started with now when you hover over the line and it's highlighted green you'll see these circles indicate its endpoints and they're larger when you're actually selecting them and then there's this little triangle in the middle that's actually the center point. So that's where we want our circle to be if we want it to be centered. I'll hit C for circle, which selects this tool. And I'm going to start the center of the circle from that midpoint. And let's make this a six millimeter circle. So we've got that. Now to get rid of the line, hit S, highlight the line, and hit the delete key. Now we've only got the circle, which is the geometry that we want to put into three dimensions here. We'll hit P for pull, which takes us from the sketch view to the three-dimensional mode. We want to select this surface, and then just by dragging it down, we've cut a hole in our material. A couple other things that happen with the pull tool. I hit Control z to undo. Once you've selected, there's this little toolbar that pops up right next to what you've selected. You can also use this up to tool to tell it that you only want it to do the extrude or the pull up to this line. Of course that's all the way through in this case, but you might want to do that sometimes if there's geometry below that surface that you don't want to accidentally cut into. The other way that you can do it, I'll hit Control Z again, you can use this ruler tool. And to do that, you select what you want to measure off of. You can kind of see that we've got four millimeters from this bottom to this top. Uh, if we only wanted to go partial depth, we could say that we want it to be 3 millimeters, and now we've got a counterboard hole. Um, so multiple different options for the pull tool, but we're just blowing a hole all the way through it. 
We're going to do the same thing to this surface. So S for select, click on the face, click on the letter K for a sketch, or you can select right here to choose sketch mode. V for view will align it with what we're looking at. And we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to do a line that goes diagonally to the outside edge. We're going to draw our circle, which is the letter C. Based on the center point, we're going to make this one six millimeters. Hit S for select, and let's delete that line. Now P for pull, and we can pull our second hole all the way through. So let's hit H for home and take a look at what we've got here. I'm still in the pull tool, so I'm going to hit S for select so I don't mess anything up accidentally. Hold down on the scroll wheel of the mouse, and you can spin around, make sure those holes go through, make sure it all looks right and everything. Now let's add some gussets. Let's put a little bit of strength in this piece. So S for select. I'm going to sketch on this face now. So click there. Click on the letter K for sketch. V for view to line it up. And we're going to do a line that goes from this corner to this corner. Now when you're doing sketches on top of a three-dimensional shape, the only line that we actually have is this one. Uh, if we hit D, which takes us to the three-dimensional shape, um, you can see that we've got a surface there, but you won't always have that. So if we go back to our sketch, Control z takes us back, there's a really important tool right here called Project to Sketch. Anytime that there's a shape or a line or anything that you want to be active on this current sketch plane, you select that tool, you highlight it, and it brings it into the current sketch. That's really handy uh, in more complex shapes. You know, let's say we had something way back here that we wanted to bring forwards to our sketch plane. We could select it. So, for example, we could put this circle in. Uh, and now when we select, let's get rid of that line, you can see we've got what would have been the perimeter of that circle projected to our current sketch plane. So anyway, uh, just a couple of tips to keep in mind as we go. Let's hit P for pull, and we're going to pull this shape inwards. Let's go in three millimeters. So hit three, hit enter, and now we've got it. And you can see that this is a single solid shape now. It's contiguous instead of being multiple shapes from multiple sketches. We've got a single solid. Let's do the same thing to our other side. S for select. Click on the face. K for sketch. V to align our view. I haven't talked about zooming yet. That uses the scroll wheel, and it's based on where the mouse pointer is. So if I wanted to zoom in on this corner, I put my mouse there, and then when I zoom in, that's the center point of where I'm zooming into. Uh, if you've got a long part or a, a weird dimension that you're trying to navigate around, you can move over to the side, zoom out, and see how the whole shape goes towards the mouse. I could zoom into something over here now, and that's a way to navigate around. The other thing that you can do, when you click on the scroll wheel, instead of spinning the object, hold down shift before you hit the scroll wheel, and now you're panning. You're sliding it from side to side and up and down. So that's a handy tool as well. We're going to hit V to align our view. And actually, let's use our Project to Sketch tool to get our diagonal line. So up here's our Project to Sketch tool. We click on it, and we select this line that we want, and now we have a shape that we can pull again. You can see there's a blue surface here. We'll click on it. We will pull it in again three millimeters. And there we have it. S for select to exit the tools, H for home. And we've built a 90 degree bracket for 25 millimeter aluminum tubing. At this point, you could save your file. Uh, of course, there's the usual icons that you use to in other Windows programs. So when we go to save, um, We'll just throw this on the desktop and we'll call it angle bracket. You want to save it as an RS doc file. That's the editable source code. Uh, and when you do a save, that's the only option. Save as lets you do STL and all those other things. So click save. You can see now in our navigator at the bottom that it's called angle bracket. Uh, when you have something that's unsaved, there will be an asterisk next to it. So let's pull something here. See that little asterisk? Um, that's a pretty good indicator to let you know if you've saved your current file or not. Uh, the next thing that you'd want to do, if this was for 3D printing, there's an export options right up here. Click on that. We can export as STL. 
pick your name, pick the location. You can also click on options and you can change the resolution of the file that you export here as well. We'll leave it as it was before. Click on save and now we've got confirmation we just saved an STL file. So congratulations, you've made your first DesignSpark mechanical part.